I brought a cowbell. Oh, nice. <laughs> That's one I found in my shed. And uh, welcome to Boulder Rotary, first Friday of December. And um, I'm glad to be back in the seat where I'm, you know, in front of you, even, uh, even if it's just for one Friday. So I would like to call on Hans Wick to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and the four-way test. Hans. Hey, thank you, John. And uh, thank you for uh, the cowbell. So, hey, just a little bit of trivia on the Pledge of Allegiance. I thought that would be helpful for everybody to know that this was actually written by Francis Bellamy in 1892. And it originally started to the flag in Republic for it was written for all countries. In 1923, they added the United States of America. And then in 1954, under President Eisenhower, we literally added the words under God. So if you will join me in the pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the four-way test. Of the things we think, say, and do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you very much, Hans. And I, um, I hope you all had a uh, great Thanksgiving. I wanted to share something with you because I one of the things I was thinking about in anticipating Thanksgiving was it seems like you wouldn't be, uh, no one could blame you if you didn't feel a, a lot of gratitude because sometimes it seems like there's more things to worry about than there was to be grateful for. But when I woke up early that day and started cooking and, um, and then by the time dinner rolled around, there were just three of us. I think it's the smallest Thanksgiving dinner I've ever had in my entire 60 years of life. And, but you know what? It felt great. It was the same, the food was just as good. The spirit was there. And I hope that all of you experience something similar at your Thanksgiving table, dinner tables, even if it was a little bit smaller than, um, than what you would like. And I intend to carry that through the rest of the holiday season. And I hope you, you all do too. Um, and I would like to remind everyone that tomorrow morning is a chance to get out there and do some do-goodery at the Boulder Community Hospital or the Sister Carmen Food Drive. Um, you can, it's going to go from nine to noon and we would love to see you. I, I purchased a special holiday mask for the occasion and I think we'll get to see Santa and I don't know if Santa will be behind some plexiglass or I don't know how that's going to work, but that's part of the surprise. So, um, I would like to go ahead and move on to the introduction of today's speaker, Devin Hibbard. Cassidy, take it away. I'm uh, very happy to do that. And did you want to do guests and, and visitors before that or after? Um, Charlotte, I know I saw something in the chat that said that the guests and visitors should identify themselves. Let me just see here. Well, we have Tin Vet. Carl's wife is with us. And we have Sarah Parkinson, who's a guest, a guest of Ronnie Wells. Welcome. Don Copland, welcome to you. You are a guest of Bill Rubin, it looks like. And let's see here. Am I Barbara Lawson, who's my guest? Welcome, Barbara. <laughs> okay. Did I miss anyone? If yes, press your space bar, unmute yourself temporarily and say hello. 
or just wave. Hello. <laughs> ah, all right, good. good. Nice to join you. <laughs> it's great to have you with us. Before we get to our uh, wayward NCW in Vegas, Chad Stam has a revealing announcement for us all to listen to. Chad? Hello, everyone. Uh, today is a very exciting day. Uh, we get to unveil next year's um, slate of board of directors nominees and the president-elect nominee. Uh, so with the help of Daryl Brown, uh, we put together uh, a pretty cool little video here that uh, we'd like to share with you guys. Older Rotary Squares. Thank you, Shadow Stevens, the man, the voice. We're oh, yeah. good luck on the show to both of you. Here's how you do well. You win tic-tac-toe with three squares across, down, and diagonally. Or you acquire as many squares as you can. You can win that way. Each game is worth $500 in cash. Third game, 1000 so you can catch up. Whoever amasses the most amount of money will have a chance, Tonya. You're so cute. To drive away in one of these Chevrolets. Look at the cars. Now, down Darryl. on the toss backstage. Doug, Darryl. you start. Pick a square. Oh, gosh. Well, thank you. Well, I'm so excited. Let's go in that left upper corner with uh, Bill Anderson. Okay, President-elect Chad Stam, you're up. Okay, I'm going to go with Randy Butler, just underneath Bill. Next is Jancy Campbell in the far upper right. I'm going to follow suit here. I'm going to go under Jancy and I'm going to take Lynn Johnson. I'm going to block you on that upper middle one with Carl Kurtz. play here so let's go to Christina Liu this is crazy this is insane I'm gonna go with uh, Jim Rodofsky bottom right well the board's getting small here uh, I'm gonna have to go down to the bottom with Doug Rutherford Hey, Don, hold on one second here. As the Boulder Rotary Club president-elect, I have changed the bylaws, and I am now permitted to go twice in a row. So I'm going to go to the center square for the win and unveil the 21-22 president-elect nominee, Cassidy Murphy. Hi, Boulder Rotary. I'm so pleased to be here today. I'm really excited about the opportunity to serve Boulder Rotary in a new way. I think that the coming years are gonna be really challenging and therefore probably really exciting and full of stuff that we cannot even imagine right now. We would not want to face that with anybody other than this club. This club is full of people who step up, who lean in, and really show up to do what needs to be done. I wanna thank you all for this chance and look forward to everything that's coming. Thank you so much to all of this year's nominees for the board and especially to Cassidy Murphy, this year's president-elect nominee. Every year we always say how great and blessed we are to have so many amazing people in this club and that how this year's group is better than any other in the past. And I certainly feel that way this year. It's very hard to put one group in front of another, but this is such an amazing slate. So thank you all. And thank you to President-elect Chad Stam. This has been a Chuck Wooler and Bill Todman production brought to you by Boulder Rotary.
Thanks, everyone. Wow. What are you going to do next week for the second announcement? Reruns. Oh, reruns. Okay, good. There's a long, proud tradition in that. Um, all right. Nancy Chin Wagner, I hope you're not becoming a Raiders fan from too much time in Vegas, but uh, I know you have someone special you want to share with, share with us today. That's right, John. Thank you. So for the membership moment today, we have my special guest in Rotarian, Dorothy Rupert. Dorothy's sponsor is Gary Kahn. She's been a member of Boulder Rotary since March of 2010. That's 10 years and nine months. So Dorothy Bell Rupert moved to Boulder in 1960 with her husband. She has two grown children now. Uh, she was a former teacher, counselor in Colorado in the public school system and an advocate in what she believes in. So in 2016, the Community Foundation of Boulder honored Dorothy with the Stan Black Award, which was sponsored by the law firm that Bill Myers is in, which is Hutchinson Black and Cook. It honors an individual who has given a lifetime of time, treasure, and talent to the community. And Dorothy is a treasure in the community as a leader who dedicated her life in making a difference. So Dorothy, are you ready for my first question? You have to unmute yourself. <laughs> and we have to see your face, Dorothy, unmute. Does anyone know how to unmute? I think she's on an iPad or a phone, so it may look different. There she goes, you're unmuted, good. Okay. Okay, great. Okay, my first question for you, Dorothy, what drives your energy and passion? Wow. <laughs> um, I think I'm to the manor born. My mother lived on a farm, my grandfather's farm, and our dad left us, and mother had these three little kids. And she just knew how to make life work. Mm -hmm. And I was a very busy six and seven year old going and uh, checking, counting chickens and seeing that they were okay, finding a long earthworm to bring in and show her that it didn't, it wasn't cut by the plow because I was following the plow. Um, so, it's, it's just been so much a part of my life, I don't even know how to respond to it. <laughs> it's just me. <laughs> you have a drive, that's for sure. I read an article on you where you had mentioned, quote, age is not a defining factor in the community. Do you recall what you meant by that? Well, I think I probably was talking with someone um, who was questioning my move to Frazier. This was about five years ago. And I said, um, well, he, he said, you know, I couldn't live with all those old people. And I looked at him and I said, hmm, okay. Um, when did you last talk five minutes, say with a high school kid? Um, no answer. Well, when did you talk with the college kid? And no, no answer. Well, when did you visit with someone from a worker from Southeast Asia? And he said, oh, I think I get it. You are where there are lots of different people. And I said, yeah, like a very smaller version of a big community, but you get them all there at once. Mm -hmm. So I really very much have loved living here. And I think that's why I said that. Wonderful. And how do you, how has the Boulder Rotary values impact your work in the community? Well, before I went in the legislature, I was a um, very active high school counselor, at Boulder, Fairview High and Boulder High. And 
One of the things that I found early on were fantastic scholarships that I could have students check out that were sponsored by Rotary. And I was convinced that Rotary must be this amazing organization that cares about kids all around the world. And so I became one of the big, big fans and didn't think I could join until I had finished. I served many years in the legislature too. Yeah. And so, so I needed to be through a, that part of my life before I could really get involved with Rotary. And I have to say, uh, without you really asking me to say it, <laughs> I love Rotary dearly. I think, you know, it's the largest humanitarian organization in the world. And I love being a part of it. And I think it's wonderful to have a cross section, more or less, <laughs> of a community in an organization that really seems to want to, in quotes, do good in the world. Wonderful, and Dorothy. Thank you so here. much <laughs> for being our membership moment person. You have been very active in the community and you continue to do so with Bowl Rotary. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Back to you, John. All right. Now, Dr. George Russell. I saw some birthdays listed in the rib, but do we have any who want to uh, speak today? Unmute yes, first. We, there yes, you we go. do. Okay, uh, good. Yeah, I thought I'd do a little poem first. Uh, guy asked me a question one time, and I so I wrote this poem. There ain't no money in poetry, he smirked, as if he thought that were clever or funny. That's okay with me, I said. There ain't no poetry in money. I write it because I have a story or a thought I'd like to, to say and the choosing of each word is like a step along the way. Like forging a trail through the forest where no one else has been and you get to choose each step and direction until you reach the end. At the end of your journey, you sit back and rest for a while and maybe someone else will follow your steps and wind up with a smile. So it's not about the money. It's the journey, don't you see? If I can make you think or smile, that's payment enough for me. But it could be about the money. I'll have the sheriff take a look because you certainly spent some money unless you stole my book. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The, the birthday girl today is Shoni Khan. We, uh, she, uh, Shoni, you unmute yourself. Oops, hello. Hi, happy birthday. Do you have anything you want to say? <clears throat> Thank you. I, I would like to the foundation for my birthday as uh, we all like to do when it, our birthdays come around. Um, I also would like to share a story from my birthday that I think aligns nicely, aligns nicely with um, what I found in Rotary. So a professor gave a balloon to every student. He had them inflate it, write their name on it and throw it in a hallway. The professors then, the professor then mixed the balloons up and threw them all out in the hallway. The students were given five minutes to find their own balloon. Despite a hectic search, no one found their balloon. At that point, the professor told the students to take the first balloon that they found and hand it to the person whose name was written on it. Within five minutes, everyone had their balloon. The professor said to the students, these balloons are like happiness. We will never forget, we will never find it if everyone is looking for their own. But if we care about other people's happiness, we'll find ours too. So with that, I leave you all and look forward to all of us doing the good work that we do to create a happier world. Very good, very good, I like that. Uh, anybody else that uh, wants to talk during their birthday month, 
uh, be sure and send me an email or or call my uh, cell number, which is 303-638-8622. Thank you, everybody, and happy birthday, Shoni. Thank you. Back to you, John. Thank you, George. Thank you, George. And uh, Shoni, it's nice to know you're a Sagittarian like I am and a few other people I know in our club. We just gather together. So uh, it's brew time. Daryl Brown and Fred, I guess, chew the brew. and guests and thank you for being here today. I am so sorry I'm not there with you. But Boulder Rotary is the best place to be on a Friday afternoon in Boulder, Colorado and December is Disease and Prevention and Treatment Month. What an amazing coincidence. I would like to thank all the Rotarians who attended our Friendsgiving. It was such a great time, and this is a word cloud of all of your thoughtfulness and all of your words of inspiration from that day. Thank you again for attending. And a reminder that the Centennial Committee is proud to announce the release of our 100-year retrospective, which you can purchase on Amazon, but we're also doing a club uh, bulk purchase, and Chad Stam is organizing that, so get a hold of Chad if you'd like a copy, or order on Amazon through Amazon Smiles. Foundation month is over, but please don't forget the Boulder Rotary Club Foundation in your year-end giving. And more on the good news front, vaccines are coming to end this virus. But do not let your guard down. Donations are still being accepted for Share a Gift. The link is in the rib. And more awesome news, the next book club meeting has been announced for January 11th with the discussion centering around the book, The Warmth of Other Suns, the epic story of America's Great Migration by Isabel Wilkerson. Contact Sue Deans for more information. I like to read books and I like to read writing. Did you know Boulder Rotary Club has a writing group? The group meets monthly and if you'd like to learn more, contact Marty Coffin Evans. And thanks to Carol Griever for her work that she published in the last week's rib. It was awesome. Thank you, Carol. East, the East Troublesome Fire is 100% contained, but our district, District 5450, is still compiling its response. If you'd like to participate, please see the district website. Our neighbors and community are in need more than ever. This is the fourth food drive of this pandemic, and we need more help than ever. Please join us tomorrow from 9 a.m. till noon at the Boulder Community Foothills Hospital parking lot. And bring all the food you can. Tell all of your friends, and please show up and support our community. Let's fill that truck again. And next week's program is Don McKinney from the CU College of Music, who also impersonates a child actor. It's going to be a great program, and don't miss it. Discovered metal column stands there, buried deep in the ground, sharp-edged and shiny. Over the past few weeks, people have pondered the meaning of the obelisk, but we know the true meaning. Why it's service above self. Coincidence that President Sally Brown was in Utah a couple of weeks ago? or not. Say it with me now. Have, Have a, a great, great weekend. weekend. Yay to Daryl and Sally. So, um, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm feeling, uh, feeling some gratitude here because I got to, I got to sit in this chair and help run this meeting today, um, uh, you know, uh, as part of my birthday, uh, which was yesterday. And I want to give a shout out to Cassidy Murphy and Fred Hull and uh, Bill Anderson and Mike Brady 
uh, and I, I'm probably leaving a, a number of people off the list, but there's a lot of people who are, are making, enabling us to um, continue doing what uh, our club does best, which is do-goodery. Do-goodery, some of you may have heard this term, but I learned it back uh, in the days when RI conventions actually convened in person. And I learned it from a, a British fellow when I uh, he was uh, in a uh, Rotaract club in the London area. And he did a whole presentation on do-goodery and it was something that stuck with me. And I'm feeling grateful that I got a chance to just uh, go in and see him. So I'm gonna close the meeting with a tip of a cap to Harvey Corman and his character Headley Lamar in Blazing Saddles. Now go do that voodoo that you do so well. Have a great weekend. <laughs>